Good morning, dear colleagues. We will resume now the second day of uh, our plenary session. Uh, so good morning to everyone. Before we start our work, I, I want to inform you that the electronic voting on amendments starts now and will be open until 2 p.m. Brussels time. You can find the links to the vote on the members portal in the document voting link for amendments. For detailed step-by-step -step information on the voting procedure, please refer to the practical guide to remote voting for the COR, which is also available on the members portal. So, we start today uh, our debate on the Union of Equality with uh, Commissioner Dali, uh, and I want to thank uh, her for being here today with us. Dear Commissioner, Commissioner Dali, the Commission President von der Leyen, put Union of Equality on the top of the political agenda with the aim of equality mainstreaming into all EU policies, legislation and funding programs. So I'm really pleased to confirm uh, for our side that the European Committee of the Regions has followed up with opinions on all the five communications of the equality package on gender equality strategy, EU Roma strategic framework for equality, inclusion and participation, the EU anti-racism action plan, the disability strategy and the LGBTIQ equality strategy. So regarding our committee's other dedicated action, I'm pleased to highlight our webpage on gender parity in politics showcasing best practices from our member on how to strengthen gender parity. So, dear Commissioner Dali, dear members, as you know very well, equality is one of the founding values of the European Union and enshrined in the treaties and in the Charter of Fundamental Rights. Equality, equal opportunities and the inclusion of people with disabilities are also key principles of the European Pillar of Social Rights. Now, unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted and exacerbated existing inequalities, marginalization and discrimination. And while the virus does not discriminate, it is clear that it has hit marginalized communities in our societies disproportionately hard. So we must continue to challenge structural discrimination and stereotypes and create conditions for everyone to live and thrive regardless of differences based on sex, racial or ethnic origin, religion or belief, disability, age or sexual orientation. So in other words, we must ensure that political decision-making takes into account the needs of everyone in our society. Promoting equality at local and national level must be placed at the heart of all of our work as local and regional politicians. So this is exactly why we believe that today's debate is of crucial importance for this matter. And I really welcome you, Commissioner Dali. So, hello, and the floor is yours. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. So, thank you so much, President, for this introduction. I, I greatly appreciate this invitation. EU institutions must work together if we want to make concrete progress on any topic. The promotion of equality and the fight against discrimination in the EU is a shared responsibility and requires the joint, resolute and ongoing efforts of all relevant stakeholders. My regular dialogue with you, the European Committee of the Regions, is an essential part of this interinstitutional EU cooperation. I thank the Committee of the Regions for its support 
to the Union of Equality Initiatives and its opinions on the gender equality strategy and the Roma strategic framework, as well as the draft opinions on the anti-racism action plan, the disability rights strategy, and the LGBTIQ equality strategy. Many policies and measures for equality, inclusion, and anti-discrimination are implemented where people live and we are well aware that local and regional authorities need to be recognized as strategic partners and involved in the implementation and monitoring of the Union of Equality package. The European Commission will take into account your important comments and recommendations on each of the policy areas covered. Appropriate financial resources should be directed to local and regional levels to implement the different equality strategies. The EU Citizens Equality Rights and Values Programme was just adopted, releasing unprecedented funding of 1.5 billion euros for protecting and promoting EU values. Already for the next two years, 100 million euros are allocated for targeted actions on equality, including gender equality, non-discrimination, promoting the rights of persons with disabilities, combating racism, xenophobia, and violence against women. Local and regional authorities and civil society are at the heart of the funding envelope. The COVID-19 crisis put new pressure on women and vulnerable groups and aggravated existing inequalities. The 673 billion euro recovery and resilience facility offers new opportunities for equality mainstreaming in national reforms and investments. Member states are preparing their recovery and resilience plans to mitigate the economic and social impacts of the pandemic. The Commission is assessing these national plans carefully to ensure that the key priorities, including gender equality and equal opportunities for all, are included. I will now take you through the Union of Equality Initiatives and highlight some of their key points, many of which are raised in the Committee's opinions. I will start with the Strategy for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the Anti-Racism Action Plan, on which you are due to adopt opinions today. The Strategy for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is our comprehensive program to improve the lives of persons with disabilities and ensure their full and equal participation in society. The strategy embraces a human rights approach to disability, helps to implement the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, is organized along eight priority areas and contains seven flagship initiatives includes actions to be delivered by the Commission and on a number of issues we call on the Member States to take action in line with their responsibilities and competencies. We welcome your opinion on the strategy and your support to its objectives and actions. Let me address some of these points raised in your opinion. I reassure you that in the implementation of the strategy, we follow an intersectional perspective. The actions pay attention to the diversity of persons with disabilities and address, for instance, women, children, and older persons in the context of their specific situations. I want also to highlight that the rules of the energy performance of buildings are being revised. This is an opportunity to address accessibility during renovations in line with the inclusive approach of the renovation wave and the new European Bauhaus. The successful implementation of the strategy is only possible with the active engagement of member states at all governance levels, including regional and local authorities, of course. Therefore, we will ensure continuous cooperation with your com committee. Moving on to the EU Anti-Racism Action Plan, the Commission is determined to fight against racism and discrimination effectively. The action plan sets out a series of concrete actions. For instance, the report on the implementation of the Racial Equality Directive was adopted on the 19th of March. By 2022, the Commission will propose any new legislation required to address possible shortcomings observed. 
This will include the strengthening of the role and independence of national equality bodies. On the 19th of March, the Commission held the Anti-Racism Summit together with the Portuguese Presidency and with the support of the Anti-Racism and Diversity Intergroup of the European Parliament. Beyond the EU institutions, including the Committee of the Regions, this summit also gathered representatives of member states, civil society bodies, international organizations, and other stakeholders, attracting more than 500 participants. We recognize the key role of the committee in the fight against racism and discrimination. We note the committee's wish to be involved in the designation of the European Capitals of Inclusion and Diversity. Our respective services are currently discussing the modalities of this involvement. Structural racism examined in the action plan and highlighted in your draft opinion is a major concern for the European Commission. Related to this, the Commission is making concerted efforts to improve data collection and increase awareness on the reality of racism in the, in the EU. The action plan expects that the member states produce their national action plans against racism in 2022. After that, by the end of 2023, the Commission will issue a report on the implementation of national action plans. With regards to the LGBTIQ equality strategy, I note that your committee is planning to adopt its opinion this October. The strategy sets out a series of measures to step up action to integrate LGBTIQ equality in all policy areas and to help lift the voices of the LGBTIQ community. In the strategy, the Commission invites member states to develop national LGBTIQ action plans. Local and regional authorities should be encouraged to be involved in the preparation and implementation of national plans and, where possible, to develop their own strategic plans at local and regional level. The strategy also calls on the Committee of the Regions to promote dialogue with local and regional authorities and civil society, including social partners, on how to advance LGBTIQ equality. The committee's draft opinion highlights the shared responsibility to combat inequality. The Commission is committed to regularly engage with the committee and other key partners to fully realize the, object the objectives of the strategy. I will now update the committee on the implementation of the gender equality strategy and the Roma strategic framework on which the committee already adopted its opinions. Since we launched the gender equality strategy in March of last year, it has become even more urgent to tackle gender inequality. The COVID-19 pandemic hit women disproportionately hard. Although much work remains to be done, we have made important progress in the strategy's first year though. On combating violence against women, it, this remains a priority for us, and our proposal for a Digital Services Act addresses online violence, which excessively affects women. We also presented the first ever victims' rights strategy. Furthermore, we are preparing a specific legislative initiative to prevent and combat gender-based and domestic violence. We have taken a major step forward for gender equality in the labor market with our proposal for binding measures on pay transparency. This will tackle pay discrimination and ensure respect for the right to equal pay. As regards gender balanced leadership, we lead by example with the first ever gender balanced college of commissioners. The EU Roma strategic framework for equality, inclusion and participation combats socioeconomic exclusion and aims to foster equality and promote participation of Roma. It also tailors policies to the specific needs of different subgroups of Roma people, including women, youth, children, EU mobile citizens, stateless people, LGBTIQ people, older people and persons with disabilities. Member states have shown their commitment to address the challenges faced by Roma communities 
by adopting the Council recommendation on Roma equality, inclusion and participation. The active involvement of the committee of the regions in the design, implementation and monitoring of national Roma strategic frameworks will be essential for their success. Together, we will get closer to our common goal of creating more equal and inclusive societies for all Europeans. I thank you for your commitment to achieving a more equal Europe and wish you a good debate. Thank you very much, Commissioner, uh, for your input. I would like to give the floor now to Jelena Drenjanin from the EPP for two minutes, please. Jelena, you have the floor. Dear Commissioner Dali, dear Helena, the union of equality is not just a strategy, it's a mindset, an attitude, and a different, fresh, inclusive way to look at the world of today. But also the world we want for tomorrow, for our children, for women, and everybody that has a form of disability. So I would say for all those who still haven't had a chance to fully express their potential as human beings, Dear Helena, our societies are undergoing a crucial transition, be green or digital. But we can be successful only if we create the right conditions at all levels of government to unchain the talents and skills that Europe really needs. At EPP, we would like to stress in particular two contexts that are part of the Union of Equality. First, we stand for equality between men and women in terms of wages, pensions, and career evolution. And we are extremely concerned still that there is an existing pay gap and female poverty and women's insufficient representation in politics and decision-making processes in many of our member states. And this is not acceptable. Second, we stand for the full achievement of children's rights, and this must happen now, today. I mean, we can't lose time. We fight for essential access to quality early child care, childhood care, education, but also health care services. But we also fiercely combat against unhuman abuses and exploitations for our children, especially online. The members of the EPP group are ready to work in all relevant core commissions to discuss and also contribute to these target measures. For example, on recent EU strategy on the rights of children and the European Child Guarantee. At the same time, we will take it into our villages, our cities and regions, as many local dialogues as possible to listen to our citizens' voices and inputs. So let us meet there and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jelena. The floor now to Xava Borboli for two minutes from the EPP. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, dear Commissioner Dali, dear, uh, dear colleagues, uh, I wish to align to what uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Drenjanin uh, just said about the real added value of having a union for equality debated by the representatives of regions and cities in the European Union. I think that uh, we are doing an excellent work in the COR and especially in the SEDEC Commission. We are building a, a very solid capital of opinions and the partnership uh, with different directorate generals. In such a context, I would like to refer to what my colleague just said concerning creating the right conditions at all levels of government to unchain talent uh, and skills and uh, couple uh, this with uh, equal opportunities. This is a particular uh, deal to me. In the EPP, we very much support the proposal to have by uh, 2030 at least 60% of all uh, adults participating in training every year. In fast-changing world, this is a very 
we must invest in terms of human capital. We must succeed uh, in this mission in order to couple equality with the uh, competitiveness uh, uh, at the world scale. Mr. Mrs. Dali, I wish to conclude by stressing the need to closely consider also the rights of women and children uh, belonging to minorities and those uh, who live in remote or sparsely populated areas. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you, Saba. Uh, the floor now to Yumi Rendstrom from the PS Group for two minutes. Thank you very much. Bästa kommissionär Dali, på PSE gruppens vägnar så vill jag varmt gratulera dig med helhetsvisionen för en jämlikhetsunion och det politiska engagemang att genomföra det som du visar. En jämlikhetsunion är ju en union som vi alla kan vara stolta över för det är en union där vi också ger möjlighet för människor att växa. Hittills så har vi bara haft splittrade politiska strategier och det är när det gäller vissa former. Men Europa behöver ju en enad front för att bekämpa diskriminering på alla grunder. Så att egenskap och föredragande för EUs första handlingsplan mot rasism kan jag bara lovorda det här verkligen välbehövliga initiativet. I mitt utkast till yttrande, som jag hoppas ska antas kort efter den här debatten, så understryker jag att de lokala och regionala myndigheterna måste erkännas som strategiska partner när det gäller att utforma, genomföra och övervaka åtgärder mot rasism. Och jag hävdar också att lokala och regionala handlingsplaner utöver de nationella handlingsplanerna kan bidra till att motverka strukturell rasism genom konkreta åtgärder på fältet som är anpassade till verkligheten i en viss region eller i en viss stad. Och så låt mig också betona att framgången mot de här nya förslagen i hög grad kommer att bero på om kommissionen övervakar ordentligt för att se till att de genomförs inom den fastställda tidsramen och med tydliga och mätbara mål. Jag är också övertygad om att den intersektionella strategin som är gemensam för alla förslag som ingår i jämlikhetsunionen även bör användas för att mäta framsteg och effekten av samspelet mellan alla befintliga antidiskrimineringsstrategier. Så jag vill tacka för ert arbete och jag vill önska er att lycka till i det här otroligt viktiga arbetet. Thank you very much. The floor now to Yasid Horvath for two minutes, please, from the BES group. Köszönöm szépen, tisztelt biztos asszony. Kollégám nagyon helyesen mondta, hogy az esélyegyenlőség központú unió olyan unió, amelyre mindannyian nagyon büszkék vagyunk, és amely minden polgár számára lehetővé teszi a boldogulást. Ebbe beletartoznak a romák is, Európa legnagyobb etnikai kisebbségi csoportja. Én vagyok a régió bizottságának a előadója az EU roma stratégiai keretével kapcsolatban, amely Európa régóta szükséges megújított kötelezettség vállalása arra, hogy a romák teljes mértékben képessé váljanak, hogy európai polgárként gyakorolják jogaikat és kötelességeiket. A roma közösségek esetében a világi járvány és annak társadalmi, gazdasági és egészségügyi hatásai súlyosbítják a meglévő egyenlőtlenségeket, és tovább növelik a szakadékot. Ezért teljes mértékben egyetértünk azzal, hogy az oktatás, foglalkoztatás, egészségügy és a lakhatás kulcs szerepet játszik a romák integrációs folyamatában, a szociális szolgáltatások szerepével együtt, különösen a helyi és regionális szinten. A települések és a régiók azok, azok a kormányzati szintek, amelyek különös felelősséggel tartoznak a roma népesség integrációjáért. Kiemelten fontos az alulról felfelé irányuló megközelítés e témában is. A bizottságnak véleményünk szerint szorosan nyomon kell követnie az előrehaladást, érvényre kell juttatnia a vonatkozó uniós jogszabályok alkalmazását, és gyorsan értékelnie kell, hogy szükség van-e további jogszabályokra. A szankció hiánya azzal a veszélyen jár, hogy tovább késlelteti a roma integrációs és integrációs folyamatot. Tisztelt biztos asszony, nem engedhetjük meg, hogy a roma kisebbség lemaradása folytatódjon. Remélem, hogy az új stratégiai keret gyors és hatékony eredménnyel fog járni. Köszönöm szépen! Köszönöm 
Thank you very much. François de Coster, s'il vous plaît, from Renew Europe, three minutes. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président, Madame la Commissaire Dali. Nous sommes une union fondée sur des valeurs. Le traité sur l'Union européenne le dit clairement. L'article 7 met en œuvre un mécanisme qui nous permet de prévenir ou de sanctionner les États membres qui viendraient plus respecter ces valeurs, dont la lutte contre les discriminations. Nous avons en face de nous bientôt une opportunité, celle de la conférence sur l'avenir de l'Europe. Et il faut que les valeurs de l'Union européenne soient respectées non seulement par les États membres, mais aussi par les collectivités locales et régionales. Vous vous êtes euh, euh, mobilisé fortement pour faire en sorte que les droits des homosexuels soient respectés par euh, les euh, collectivités de certains États membres qui ont voulu se déclarer des, des zones sans communauté LGBTIQ. Et vous avez eu raison et vous êtes dans votre responsabilité, je tiens à vous en remercier. Et quelle bonne nouvelle quand la commune de Krasnik a retiré sa résolution. Vous le savez, le groupe Renew Europe a été fortement mobilisé auprès d'une trentaine de maires, de présidents de régions polonaises, pour leur proposer de revoir leur position, pour proposer d'entrer en dialogue. Et je crois que le dialogue est nécessaire pour rappeler l'importance des valeurs au plan de l'Union européenne. Mais il a fallu aller plus loin. Il a fallu dire qu'il y aurait des sanctions, des conséquences financières, que certains financements en termes de jumelage seraient retirés. Alors, Madame la Commissaire, dans la conférence sur l'avenir de l'Europe, pouvons-nous euh, renforcer les mécanismes qui amèneraient non seulement les États à respecter les valeurs, mais aussi tous ceux à quelque niveau de gouvernance qu'on se situe bénéficient euh, de soutien financier de l'Union européenne. Que cette menace euh, soit connue clairement, réaffirmée dans des textes, peut-être même au niveau du traité, je crois que nous le devons pour l'ensemble des citoyens européens. Et puis, vous me permettrez de finir par une pensée par ce jeune ambulancier, Norman Kinsoulis, laiton, qui a été brûlé vif il y a quelques jours, qui est mort de ses blessures cinq jours plus tard. Nous le devons pour toutes ces victimes de la discrimination. Nous avons en face de nous une véritable opportunité pour que nous soyons clairs sur nos valeurs et notre volonté forte politique de les faire respecter partout en Europe. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. The floor now to Matteo Bianchi from the ECR for two and a half minutes, please. Grazie Presidente, caro Commissario, l'Europa vanta una tragica storia in materia di diritti umani nel XX secolo. L'olocausto, la colonizzazione, la sterilizzazione forzata delle minoranze sono stati tutti orchestrati dai paesi europei e condotti sul territorio europeo. Non bisogna tornare a quegli anni oscuri in Europa. I paesi europei devono confrontarsi con la loro storia e fungere da esempio per il mondo. Il razzismo, la xenofobia, la discriminazione in tutte le loro forme devono essere condannati con forza. Il modo migliore per garantire che la tolleranza prevalga nelle nostre società è investire nell'istruzione dei nostri figli e avere sistemi giuridici resilienti. Gli strumenti per farlo sono giustamente nelle mani dei nostri 27 Stati membri. Caro Commissario, è positivo che l'Unione Europea stia cercando modi per assistere i Paesi europei nei loro sforzi volti a combattere la discriminazione. Non sono tuttavia convinto dei metodi proposti, ovvero minacciando sanzioni e creando un maggior numero di agenzie e nuove figure dell'Unione Europea. Credo che tale approccio non produrrà i risultati attesi e l'obiettivo principale dell'Unione Europea nel garantire la parità eh, dovrebbe essere quello di fungere da piattaforma per lo scambio di buone pratiche e di dati e non di duplicare le strutture esistenti a livello nazionale. Mi permetta di ricordarle che se l'Unione Europea vuole essere attiva in questo campo deve dare l'esempio ma temo che ciò non sia avvenuto fino ad ora. 
Vorrei infine aggiungere un'osservazione. Oggi parliamo molto della eh, protezione dei gruppi vulnerabili, ma uno di essi non è stato menzionato, il popolo ebraico. Uno degli obiettivi principali degli Stati membri deve essere quello di affrontare meglio il crescente antisemitismo. Ciò deve includere la memoria l'istruzione e la legislazione anche a livello nazionale. Ma lo stesso discorso vale anche per i cristiani nel mondo, perseguitati in molti paesi illiberali per motivi religiosi o di semplici tradizioni eh, culturali. Ma questo avviene purtroppo anche in Europa, mi preme citare il prete sgozzato in Francia, e questo minaccia anche le nostre tradizioni e le nostre fondamenta eh, valoriali. Conto, signora Commissaria, sul suo sostegno e di tutta la Commissione a tale riguardo e la ringrazio. Thank you very much. Elisabeth Nebrela Villa from the EA Group for two minutes, please. Katia Meyer from the Greens for two minutes. Sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, vieles an der Union der Gleichheit bewerten wir hier aus Sachsen heraus absolut positiv, denn es ist ein glaubwürdiges Bekenntnis der Union zur Gleichheit und das hat der Präsident des ADRs ja in seinen Eingangsworten auch ins Zentrum gestellt. Und deswegen schließen wir uns auch diesem Gedanken der Einheit, der Vielfalt an, sozusagen für ein Europa der Gleichheit. Und dass die fünf Aspekte, die ins, äh, im Zentrum der Union der Gleichheit gerückt werden, in einem intersektionalen Ansatz äh, betrachtet werden und dass es sich um eine horizontale Richtlinie zur Nichtdiskriminierung handelt, ist absolut richtig. Gerade bei den Aspekten Gleichstellung der Geschlechter, Gleichstellung der Menschen unabhängig von ihrer Hautfarbe, auch das ganze Thema Inklusion, aber auch natürlich die Strategie der Rechte für die Menschen mit Behinderung sind absolut zentral. Was mir aber noch mal besonders wichtig ist, sind auch die Gleichstellung von Menschen unabhängig ihrer sexuellen und geschlechtlichen Orientierung. Und ich glaube, da sind wir noch nicht so weit in Europa, in allen Nationalstaaten, wie wir uns das gerne wünschen. Und da wünsche ich mir auch von der Europäischen Kommission noch ein stärkeres Eintreten genau für diese Rechte. Ein Aspekt will ich aber vielleicht trotzdem auch noch nennen, der mir insbesondere aufgefallen ist beim Lesen der Übersetzung, nämlich dass im Aktionsplan gegen Rassismus der Begriff Rasse verwendet wird und das ist im Deutschen ein sehr hochproblematischer Begriff und der ist schlicht politisch wie wissenschaftlich nicht haltbar. Denn Rassismus produziert den Begriff Rasse und nicht umgekehrt. Im Deutschen Bundestag und auch wir hier in Sachsen versuchen aus unserem Grundgesetz bzw. hier aus der Verfassung diesen Begriff Rasse zu streichen und eine Alternative zu finden. Und das sollte meines Erachtens auch auf der europäischen Ebene versucht werden, dass wir diese rassistische oder dass wir diese Begriffe nicht reproduzieren. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. Carlos Aguilar for one minute, please. Muchas gracias, Presidente. Muchas gracias, Comisaria. La Unión Europea debe ser un referente en igualdad de derechos en todos los ámbitos, pero también tiene que invertir para conseguir la igualdad eficaz para las personas con discapacidad. Hay que abortar más recursos económicos. Hay que ofrecer los medios para que las personas con discapacidad puedan participar perfectamente en nuestra sociedad y disfrutar de una vida con normalidad. Servicios sanitarios, aprendizaje, servicios sociales, viajes, trabajo, vivienda… Hace falta dinero. Hay que fortalecer los sistemas de protección social, apoyar el aprendizaje y potenciar el acceso a empleos adecuados, como con más recursos económicos y más protección normativa. Una igualdad práctica para la vida, destinar recursos económicos, generar servicios para apoyar a las familias, particularmente en el mundo rural, invertir en el desarrollo de estas personas y darles prioridad. Quienes no tienen fácil realizar cualquier trabajo deben encontrar más ventajas eficaces para acceder a otros empleos que sí puedan desarrollar. Hay que facilitarles vivir desde la independencia, establecer los sistemas pedagógicos y sociales para favorecer su aprendizaje y abortar los mecanismos políticos y económicos que permitan a las personas con discapacidad disponer de unos medios de vida adecuados para que puedan alcanzar eficazmente la igualdad 
y desarrollar sus vidas con normalidad y felicidad. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Satu Hapanen, for one minute, please. Kiitos arvoista puheenjohtaja. Kiitos komissaari Dalli tärkeästä työstä. Keskustelemme tärkeästä asiasta tasa-arvosta ja yhdenvertaisuudesta. On hyvä, että meillä on ohjelmia eri vähemmistöjen oikeuksien toteuttamiseksi. Se on tärkeää niin kauan kuin joiltakin puuttuvat oikeudet, mutta tavoitteena tulisi olla kuitenkin ymmärtää, että meillä on vain erilaisia kansalaisia, erilaisia kuntalaisia, erilaisille, erilaisille tarpeineen. Ja niin kauan kuin tarkastelemme toisia ihmisiä, ikään kuin he olisivat poikkeuksellisia, on meidän vaikea löytää tasa-arvoa. Tavoitteena tuleekin olla kansalaisten erilaisten tarpeiden tunnistaminen ja näihin tarpeisiin vastaaminen. On mahdollistettava jokaisen osallistuminen ja esimerkiksi harjoittelupaikan tai työn saaminen ihmisen taustasta tai ominaisuuksista riippumatta. Kouluissa on oltava tukea vieraskielisille lapsille ja esimerkiksi uimahalleissa täytyy huomioida myös kolmas sukupuoli pukeutumistiloineen. On tärkeää lisätä päättäjien tietoisuutta erilaisten ihmisten elämäntilanteista ja heidän ongelmistaan. Esimerkiksi omassa kunnassani järjestimme maahanmuuttajanuoria koskevan tilaisuuden, jossa kuulimme maahanmuuttajanuoria heitä itseään. Kiitos. Thank you very much, Elizabeth Nebreda Villa. For two minutes. Hello. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. President, dear Commissioner, dear colleagues. On behalf of the European Alliance Group, I'd like to welcome this debate at a time when equality, as it is enshrined in our treaties, is facing one of the most dangerous moments since the founding of the EU 71 years ago. In the last seven days, in Latvia, a young LGBTQ activist has been burned alive because of his sexual orientation. In Italy, a public TV channel has been accused of censoring a singer after he condemned the homophobic and racist declarations of a far-right political party. And in Madrid, the newly elected regional government will depend on the support of a political party which claims that violence against women does not exist. Inequalities and intolerance are spreading across Europe. We must act to make the union of equality a reality. There is no reason for being weak against intolerance, neither to hide behind the COVID-19 pandemic to justify the increase of inequalities in Europe. This is why we welcome the initiative to designate the European capitals of inclusion and diversity. By the way, we did the committee of the region should be involved in the initiative, as uh, we welcome to the Commission several action plans on gender equality, LGBTIQ, and anti-racism for the period 2025. Regions are already doing our part too. To take Catalonia's example, back in 2014, we adopted a specific law to guarantee the rights of lesbians, gays, bisexual, trans, and intersex people, and to eradicate homophobia, biphobia, and transphobia. And a few months ago, our parliament unanimously passed a new broader law on equal treatment and non-discrimination, which specifically addresses all kinds of discrimination and puts the victims at the center. But we need to do more. The respect for equality and diversity should be, for instance, one of the main criteria in all funding programs, from the EU structural funds all the way down to the local level. And we will certainly need more dialogue, cooperation with civil society, communication and education strategies, as well projects to improve inclusion and participation to make change happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Patrick schwartz Kiefer, for one minute, please. Danke schön, sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, verehrte Kommissarin. Die Gleichheit in der EU ist ein sehr wichtiges Thema. Was mir fehlt im Konzept der Union of Equality ist, dass man über die Lohnunterschiede zwischen den verschiedenen Regionen Europas nicht spricht. Niemand soll aufgrund des Geschlechts oder eben der Abstammung benachteiligt werden. Das ist eindeutig. Aber wenn wir zum Beispiel in meiner Region branau boronjo das Ziel erreichen, dass die Frauen die gleiche Arbeit den gleichen Lohn bekommen, Sie werden durchschnittlich 450 Euro netto verdienen. Wäre das schon die Union der Gleichheit? Ein weiteres Thema ist die Frage der Minderheiten, zum Beispiel der sprachlichen Minderheiten. Bittere Erfahrung, dass die Kommission dieses Thema für ein innenpolitisches Thema der Mitgliedstaaten hält. Nehmen wir das Beispiel von Minority Safe Pack, eine Initiative mit dem Ziel, die Union der Gleichheit aus dieser Sicht zu schaffen. Sie wurde leider quasi abgelehnt. Ist das dann die Union der Gleichheit? Thank you. 
Thank you, Sean. Declan McDonald for one minute, please. Welcome, Madam Commissioner. We often speak of equality and the wish to ensure equal treatment for all. But I would like to, to highlight the fact that we have not achieved equality for those with disabilities. Quite frankly, the progress has been very poor and this needs to change. In a recent speech, you spoke of the need of engagement from member states, stakeholders and disability persons organization, all working together to improve services and access to employment. But how do we ensure that this is achieved? Are there practical steps we need to take? How do we ensure funding goes to the end users rather than the bureaucratic governance? Disability people who were highly affected during the pandemic have many of their services cancelled or postponed. Is there a fast track system to ensure that these services can be rescheduled as quickly as possible? Finally, a practical issue. Have the EU institutions had any success opening the door to more disability persons to work within the different institutions. Goremila Mahagot, thank you. Thank you very much. Yaroslav Stavarsky, for one minute, please. Panie Przewodniczący, Pani Komisarz, ja jestem z województwa lubelskiego, a pochodzę z miasta Kraśnik. To miasto, które dzisiaj zostało wymienione, że jesteśmy rzekomo nietolerancyjni wobec osób LBGT i Q. Chciałem tylko powiedzieć Państwu, że naprawdę wobec wszystkich osób, mieszkańcy Lubelszczyzny, jak i Kraśnika są bardzo otwarci i nawet jakieś deklaracje, które gdzieś tam padają w przestrzeni publicznej, nie mają na celu kogokolwiek obrazić, bądź kogokolwiek postawić w sytuacji niekomfortowej. Chcę zapewnić, że Lubelszczyzna, jak i miasto Kraśnik to są ludzie tolerancyjni, którzy chcą współpracy z wszystkimi. I chciałbym tylko zwrócić Państwu uwagę, że problem LBGTIQ na pewno jest ważny, ale ważniejszy jest problem, który odradza się w Europie, szczególnie w Niemczech, problem antysemityzmu. I na to powinna Unia Europejska bardziej zwrócić uwagę, bo antysemityzm odradzający się w Europie Zachodniej jest bardzo, bardzo niebezpieczny. Dlatego wzywam Panią Komisarz do zintensyfikowania wszystkich działań związanych z przeciwdziałaniem antysemityzmowi. Dziękuję. Thank you very much. Vladislav Ortil for one minute, please. Dziękuję bardzo. Panie komisarz, panie przewodniczący, bardzo się cieszę, że w tej dyskusji możemy dzisiaj uczestniczyć. Myślę, że trzeba podkreślić, żeby pamiętać o tym, że jest powszechna deklaracja praw człowieka, a w 30 artykułach w tej deklaracji Mówimy o e, prawach, które przysługują każdemu człowiekowi. W Polsce nie mieliśmy niewolnictwa, nie mieliśmy oczywiście kolonii. Mamy wspólną wielowiekową e, historię z narodem żydowskim. E, I też cieszę się bardzo, że Mateo Bianchi wspomniał o e, prześladowaniach chrześcijan. O tym także musimy mówić. To jest zjawisko, które w skali świata, w skali Europy też ma miejsce. Dla przykładu chcę pokazać, że w bardzo konserwatywnym województwie podkarpackim na pięciu członków zarządu są dwie kobiety. No i też więcej tu już nie będę dodawał. Chciałbym, abyśmy mówiąc o tych wszystkich grupach, które potencjalnie mogą być nierówno traktowane, mieli na uwadze zasadę proporcjonalności i też zasadę skali. Bardzo dziękuję. And now our last intervention from Sari Rausio for one minute. Hyvää huomenta täältä Suomesta ja kiitos tästä erinomaisen tärkeästä keskustelusta. Ei mitään meistä ilman meitä on sanonta, mitä me käytämme Suomessa. Eli on tärkeää, että meillä on erilaisissa päätöksentekopöydissä mukana ihmisiä, joilla on erilaiset taustat, erilaiset ominaisuudet ja erilaiset vahvuudet. Se tuo sitä aitoa eurooppalaista vahvuutta myös. Ja arvoisa, äh, arvoisa, äh, arvoisat henkilöt, on todella tärkeää, että me kiinnitämme erityistä huomiota lapsiin ja nuoriin koko Euroopassa yhdenvertaisiin mahdollisuuksiin, siihen, että jokainen on arvokas ja jokaisella on mahdollisuus oppia. 
Toteutus tehdään arjessa ja sen takia kuntien ja kaupunkien on oltava mukana yhdenvertaisen Euroopan luomisessa. On välttämätöntä ja hienoa, että YK vammaisten oikeuksien sopimus lähtee yhdenvertaisuudesta, ominaisuuksista ja on erittäin tärkeää, aivan kuten Rova Nebrada totesi, otetaan huomioon myös rahoituksessa. Kiitos. Kiitos. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Dalin, uh, the time has come now for you to uh, have your reaction on uh, what you heard from our members. Uh, so you have the floor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is the sound on? Can you hear me? Of course, yes, we can hear you very well. Thank you. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Is the sound on? We can hear you very, very well. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, well, I will try and touch briefly upon uh, <laughs> all that was uh, said, uh, I hope that I won't disappoint anyone. Yes, the first comment was about the, the gender pay gap, as, as we know, we have the proposal now, so we will see that that uh, we get the approval for for that uh, uh, from from council. And and yes, the comment on the lack of women in decision making, even there, we we have. Uh, the women on boards proposal which has been there for many many years and and uh, uh, if we manage to push that through uh, there i'm sure that there will be an improvement of, of women in decision making uh, position positions yes uh, we we i also heard about the rights of women and children living in remote areas i think this is this is uh, a, a subject of uh, importance for the committee of the regions because you are closest to, to the citizens in these uh, remote areas. So I am sure that uh, you can bring issues to our attention uh, more than other people can. So, so we, can, we can progress in this area uh, as well. And, and I know that there is a lot that needs to be uh, done and that is why I insist that we must put all our resources uh, together. About the intersectional uh, approach, I think this is definitely the way forward. Uh, when we speak about minorities, for instance, uh, of Roma, LGBTIQ, persons with disabilities, uh, not one of these groups is a homogenous group. Uh, so, so we we really uh, must apply this intersectional uh, perspective because because you can be a person can be many things and and therefore the intersectional approach is of the essence. Uh, on Roma, regarding education and housing and health during the pandemic, uh, yes, uh, we know that that these problems have been exacerbated uh, during the pandemic but also uh, somebody said don't hide behind the pandemic of course not uh, actually actually i think in, in terms of uh, equality uh, the pandemic was a wake-up call for those people who were, maybe were not so much aware of the inequalities for persons with disabilities, for Roma, for, for women, for LGBTIQ people. And we have heard a lot of, a lot of uh, talk and discussions about how these inequalities have been exacerbated. So rather than hiding behind the pandemic, I think what has actually happened is that a spotlight was thrown on these inequalities uh, because of the of the uh, pandemic, but regarding Roma, yes, the situation is is leaves much to be desired, I would say. And uh, my plan was around from the very beginning of, of um, my term as commissioner to to visit Roma settlements, but then we, we 
couldn't do it because we couldn't uh, travel. Uh, but my plan still is to visit these settlements because uh, I, I, I really believe that, that uh, a lot needs to be done there. And uh, I will see also to the implementation of the strategy which um, should, should help uh, Roma people. Uh, yes, uh, LGBTIQ freedom zones, uh, as you know, the, the Parliament uh, has declared Euro the European Union as an LGBTIQ uh, freedom zone. Of course, this is symbolic, but uh, I'm sure that, that it has its... Uh, uh, the message is very clear also that we cannot afford to have LGBTIQ free zones. So that is why we are saying LGBTIQ freedom zones. Of course, dialogue is the best way um, in order to try and arrive at, at solutions on how to um, get rid of, of these mentalities and these attitudes. Uh, because we can have all the legislation in the world, but unless we change culture and attitudes, we will still have problems. So dialogue is, is a good way to help in that uh, direction, but of course we must also uh, take action. Uh, with regards to proposals being made, uh, we, we are still very much in time to, to put in uh, our ideas to the co conference on the future of Europe, on, on the Europe which we want to see. So I think this is a great opportunity to propose the Europe that we want, the LGBTIQ freedom zone Europe that we want. So uh, the more um, input there is in this conference um, for Europe, I think that the more we can um, how shall I say, the more we can promote equality and the more we can highlight and put the spotlight on the fact that uh, we do not have a, 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 a union of equality yet. And there is so much which still has to be done. So the more proposals for equality that there are uh, in the, in the, um, for the conference of, uh, on the future of Europe, that is more power to our elbows to work more, work harder, and uh, get more people on board in our project for uh, equality. Yes, we had the comment also that, that uh, um, ignorance prevails in our societies. And, and I agree very much with that. Ignorance in the sense of thinking that our reality is the only reality and that it is the only reality that we care about. And this is what we need to change, this ignorance in this sense. As I said earlier, we can have all the proposals, all the legislation, all the directives that you want, but unless we change the mindset, unless we look at the other as one big global family and that nobody is more or less than the other, then we will, have, we will still have difficulties, we will still have prejudices, we will still have racism, we will have, still have discrimination. And it all comes from ignorance, ignorance of not, put, of not knowing the other, of not putting on the shoes of the other, and walking a few paces in those shoes so that we are able to understand the others. Unless we do that, yes, ignorance will uh, prevail. Um, yeah, and for equality to be cross-cutting, yes, as you know, there is the anti-discrimination directive, which again uh, has been shelved for many, many uh, years. I think that it is of the essence that, that we that we have this, this uh, anti-discrimination um, proposal for, for a directive. Um, but again, here we will all have to act together and we can say it in the Conference for the Future of Europe, unless we have this anti-discrimination directive, we will continue running on the spot when it comes to equality. We have to be strong in our words 
and we really uh, must see that this directive, uh, this proposal for a directive actually is, is implemented. Regarding the term race, I, I hate the term too, and, and because to me, there is only one race, the human race. But, but we know that this is uh, not what many people uh, believe, and we will have to do, make do with the word uh, race until we do not need it anymore. That is my wish, that is my dream, that is what I work for, that we will not need uh, the, the word race anymore, because we will be all one race with no discrimination, with no prejudice, but we, we know it would be an, an understatement to say that we are not there yet. So, violence across uh, Europe against women, against LGBTIQ, against Roma, against minorities, against people with disabilities. Uh, yes, uh, we, we must be very careful not to allow any backtracking. This is still happening. Um, we know that a lot has been uh, done and we have made progress, but when we see these things around us, we, we question ourselves, are we going back? Are we uh, backtracking? And that is what we must not uh, allow. It, that means that we must work harder, as you can see from all our strategies, these strategies are all there but we need the member states to have their own strategy, to have their own plans on how, on how to tackle uh, all this, this violence, which, which, which we condemn strongly. Um, but it, it also is a reminder to us on how vigilant we have to be and how we need to work hand in hand. With, we, are, we help member states by having these strategies, by uh, having directives, but, but then in the end, the action has to be taken at member state uh, level uh, in order to eradicate this um, violence. And, and I would say that you are an important uh, part of, of, of all this because you are closer to the citizens and you are very well placed to, to help in this, in this uh, European project for uh, equality, for anti-violence, for anti-racism. Um, persons with disabilities, yes, it was said that there was uh, slow progress there, and I think our new strategy should step up uh, our work and the work of member states um, in, in this uh, direction. And with regards to the uh, commission we, we, as you know, we, we appreciate uh, diversity as a strength. And I always say um, charity begins at home. So we are also looking inwards uh, to see that the commission is open uh, to all without any uh, discrimination. And I'm working with Commissioner Han on human resources so that uh, there is more diversity in, in the uh, commission. Anti-Semitism, of course, is an area which requires uh, work and, as you know, also uh, we are working on this also with uh, Vice President uh, Skinas is, is working in this, in this uh, domain and any, any, uh, any anti anti-Semitism, anti-racism is, is, is wrong and, and we are committed to address uh, these realities. Also, persecution of Christians was, was um, uh, mentioned. And uh, of course, we strongly condemn this. Uh, and um, any persecution is wrong, uh, unless you are persecuting me with love and, and flowers. And <laughs> any persecution is, 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 is wrong. So, so uh, we must all be free, uh, even, of course, when it comes to religious uh, belief. So, so, so uh, none of this uh, is, is uh, acceptable. And um, to, to, to close, I would say that, yes, uh, with regards to persons with disabilities, 
we work with the with the motto nothing about persons with disabilities without persons with disabilities because persons with disabilities are best placed persons with the experience to advise us on how to go about our strategies, our policies. So, so definitely uh, nothing about persons with disabilities without persons with disabilities. Uh, thank you. This 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 was very uh, interesting, and uh, I hope that uh, we can follow up on, on on this discussion. Thank you very much. Commissioner Dali, it was uh, really a very, very interesting debate and I think we had the chance and the opportunity to discuss issues uh, that uh, are of great importance for the European Union, certainly for the European Committee of the Regions and uh, I really believe that equality is a matter that needs to be put uh, right in the center of the table of the policies that are being implemented in the European Union. And I really want to thank you not only for your presence here today to our committee, but generally for your great work uh, and determination throughout uh, these years. And uh, I'm sure that we will have the opportunity to work uh, even closely uh, in the future from now on without hopefully this uh, pandemic keeping us away uh, from one another. So thank you again for uh, your participation and your very, very, very valuable inputs today. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Goodbye.